Hi everyone, I'm Shane and I'm the developer advocate at Decentology and today I'm going to be talking about how you can use the Builder Kit to build smart modules on the Hyperverse. So first, let's go ahead and pull up uh, docs.hyperverse.dev. Uh, so this will show you exactly step by step of everything that I'm going to be explaining today. Uh, so the first thing that we'll look at is this create modules tab uh, to be able to start creating smart modules. We'll go ahead and uh, go to the EVM builder kit. So this is the uh, builder kit that we have created for smart contract developers to easily create smart modules on the Hyperverse uh, and obviously for all EVM uh, based chains. So we'll go ahead and click uh, environment setup and then um, uh, this is where uh, we can go ahead and set up our um, builder kit and, and start using it. So uh, a quick thing to note is that uh, there, are, there are four layers that I'm going to be uh, discussing with you guys today and, and showing you in the code as well. Um, so the builder kit consists of these four layers. So there's the smart contract layer, uh, there is unit tests, there's the JavaScript API, and then there is the UI harness. So this as a whole creates the smart module uh, as the entire package and that is what is being used uh, by um, the Hyperverse Bono repo or you know whoever else uh, that can import these smart modules and use them in their Web3 application as they wish. So all that, all that I will cover um, and we, we can go ahead and uh, get started with that. So uh, as you can see here, uh, the first thing you will actually do is um, go to set up builder kit. So what you can do here um, is go to uh, uh, git clone this uh, repo. So this is the Hyperverse EVM uh, builder kit repo. Uh, and then we can actually go into um, the folder itself. Uh, this is everything that I've already done. And then we'll go ahead and install all the dependencies. Uh, so in this case, we're using PNPM. Um, so you'll go ahead and, and run this command, which will install all the dependencies for you. Um, and then you'll just run a storybook. So uh, what this will show, um, will show an example of the connect uh, wallet feature. Uh, so I actually have that uh, done uh, already and, and running. So you can go ahead and, and see right here that we're running on localhost uh, 6006. And you can see um, that there is this connect wallet uh, functionality as a demo. Um, so let's actually go ahead and look at some code. Um, so there's two things to note here. Uh, we have uh, the builder kit, which uh, starts from scratch. Um, and then we have an example builder kit for you to reference, uh, which showcases uh, the ERC721 module uh, that we've already created. So uh, you have both to reference. So the first one that we'll be referencing and, and going over will be the um, builder kit that uh, is how it displays from scratch when you're starting. Um, so this is exactly what uh, showcases um, uh, from that repo or from that package. And then this would be the um, uh, example of uh, a smart uh, module being built with the ERC721 um, functionality. So uh, let's go ahead and, and look at the differences and, and crack down on each of those layers. So first, uh, we'll actually be looking at the uh, smart contract layer. So in the smart contract layer, there are four contracts to uh, keep in mind, uh, which is all already in the contracts folder. So first would be the um, this module uh, smart contract. So uh, all this is doing is um, Essentially, it contains the core functionality of the smart contract. So this is where uh, you would kind of just uh, do your own ordinary smart contract functionality of whatever functionality that you're trying to build. So for example, in the ERC721 um, uh, example uh, in the builder kit, you can see that uh, this smart contract is doing the ERC721 functionality uh, for the smart contract. So, um, you know, all, all that is there. And the main thing to, to look at is um, basically this, this base that's already here. Uh, this is the stuff that you would update and change. So you can update the, uh, the actual metadata for the module. So the module name, as you can see here, in this case, since it is ERC721, we've changed that. We've also changed the file name. So instead of, you know, module.sol, it's uh, ERC721. Um, and then you can also see here that all this stuff still stays, right? This tenant functionality, uh, uh, these two uh, public and private uh, variables, they all stay. Um, so the rest would just be the ordinary, uh, you know, smart contract functionality. And now we can actually get into uh, the module uh, factory. So this actually contains uh, the clone uh, factory implementation of the smart module. 
Uh, so again, this side shows the base of you know what is required. And then if we go into the ERC721 factory uh, smart module, you can see that um, uh, it's here as well. So you, all you would have to do is just update um, some of these uh, you know variable names or uh, according to whatever your, your smart contract um, shows. And then uh, we'll go ahead and go inside the Hyperverse folder. So in here, you'll see that there is a clone factory smart contract. So uh, essentially all this is doing is enabling the uh, module factory, right? That we had just discussed. It's enabling the module factory to deploy clones for your smart module. So this is where the composability aspect really comes into play, right? Where your smart modules are clonable and reusable um, instead of you know creating brand new ones uh, from scratch. So um, yeah, this is where that is happening. And then we can go into the uh, Hyperverse uh, module um, smart contract. Uh, so this is where uh, it contains the Hyperverse um, EVM smart module standard. So this is kind of like the blueprint of uh, the smart module uh, itself, uh, which we can actually show right here as well. So we have the clone factory here, and then we also have the, um, uh, the smart module standard um, on Ethereum here. Cool. So now we can actually uh, go ahead and go to the next layer, uh, which will be the um, uh, unit tests. So now uh, we can get into unit tests. Um, and, and this is where we would actually go to the um, uh, test folder and look at module uh, test.js. So this is all a you know JavaScript file um, that will display uh, all your tests that you want to run on your smart contract. So uh, let's go ahead and close this up and look at um, the test um, file for the ERC721 module. So you can see here, um, obviously that it's you know a little bit different than this since we have the ERC721 uh, smart module uh, and smart contracts are already on here. Um, so this is where it's uh, simply um, you know running these tests. Um, and you can see right here that uh, you know we have this same before each function you see right here uh, that's you know very similar uh, get contract factory uh, we do the same thing here get contract factory except it's just a, a different name because uh, it is the uh, ERC721 factory uh, file uh, smart contract so we have that there as well um, cool now we can actually get into uh, the uh, JavaScript API uh, layer um, so let's go ahead and look at that. So um, if we actually close this and we go to the source folder, uh, so let me close this on this side and go here to the source folder. Um, here are um, uh, the JavaScript files for uh, the JavaScript API uh, layer. Um, so first we'll go ahead and look at the module library uh, dot, um, ts file. So in here, this library basically um, uh, contains uh, the detailed functions that uh, read and write to the blockchain. So if we go ahead and look at um, the library file for here, obviously it's not called you know module library, it's called the ERC721 library. You can see that um, these are the functionalities that can be called uh, on the smart contract. So this is where it's extracting that functionality uh, into JavaScript, uh, whichever read and write functionality there is. So in this case, in the ERC721 um, uh, module, you can get the balance of a user, um, you can get the owner of, you can get, uh, you know, you can mint, you can transfer all that stuff. So all, all those functionalities are here. Uh, you can obviously see that there is a, you know, base on, on this side uh, for you to reference uh, as well. Um, so now we can go ahead and look at the use hook. Um, file so this would be the equivalent of use erc721 um, and uh, let's go ahead and, and look at that so in here this basically is the react hook that uh, exposes your library to the react ecosystem so now uh, this is the hook that we can import you know on the front end and uh, actually call the functionalities that we just created uh, in the library file um, so you can go ahead and see an example of that here. Uh, it's very similar, uh, right? Just some uh, few naming conventions that are different. Uh, we see that there's the module library. Uh, instead, we're doing ERC721 library. And then we have this uh, events uh, variable as well in here. Um, and you see that the tenant ID uh, and all this stuff still stays the same. Um, cool. So now we can go ahead and look at the uh, provider.tsx. Um, so what this file is doing is that um, the, the Hyperverse modules use the React context to expose 
um, state to the child components. So this is the provider that would then be wrapped on the front end, um, uh, wrapped to all of its nested components in the app.tsx file uh, so that the entire application now has access to uh, the Hyperverse. Um, so that is uh, pretty much exactly what this is doing here. And you can see here, it's also uh, very similar. Uh, we're just using the ERC721 um, uh, dot provider uh, instead of what we have here as the module dot provider. Um, and then we have the initial state uh, as the uh, tenant ID, which is already being um, implemented here as well. Cool. Um, so now we can go ahead and look at the uh, environment dot TS file. Um, so in here, this is basically a you know simple component that uh, will identify uh, which blockchain and network um, that your module is being used under. So you know in this case, this is the you know EVM uh, builder kit. Uh, in this case, we're using uh, Ethereum. So uh, this is where um, it's basically just you know telling it uh, this is the blockchain, this is the network. So we can see here that again you know both of these are going to be uh, pretty much uh, exactly the same. Um, um, so you can see that here. Uh, you can see that the environment, we're getting the blockchain, we're getting the network, um, all that is uh, you know, very similar uh, between the two. Cool, so now um, the final one uh, in this source folder will be the index.ts. So we can go ahead and look at that. Uh, this basically just handles um, the imports and exports uh, for uh, the JavaScript API. Um, so again, the, both of these will be very similar. It'll just be, um, you know, obviously the naming conventions of uh, what you're exporting um, instead of it just being the base, you know, module name. Cool. So now we can go ahead and close the source folder. And now uh, we can go ahead and look at the uh, UI harness layer. Uh, so in this layer, we'll go ahead and look at the stories folder. So we can open up both these stories folder. So uh, this is where uh, where I showed uh, Storybook as the example uh, for the base builder kit where you saw just the connect wallet feature. Uh, I'll go ahead and run this as well uh, for you to see um, how this Storybook looks. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this PNPM uh, Storybook command. Um, uh, let me go ahead and close this. Um, run this again and pull that up for you. So um, let's refresh and we'll let it load. Um, we'll pull up localhost 6006 and there we go. So right here, you'll see the storybook for um, the ERC721 builder kit uh, example. So this shows you, you know, all the components uh, of examples of you know different functionalities that can be called uh, in the smart module. Uh, so this is great, obviously, for you know anyone that wants to see what is possible with the smart contract uh, with the smart module. Um, so you can go ahead and see you know again this connect wallet, this mint um, functionality. You can see the get balance of, so it tells you the balance of a specific account address, which you can you know paste in here. You can see transfer, so uh, you can basically see all these functionalities that are, are possible within. Uh, this smart module. Uh, and then we also have this, you know, stories and introduction as well, which gives an introduction uh, to the user about, you know, what exactly does the smart module do, high level overview, uh, all that fun stuff. So uh, you have everything that you need right here. Um, so it's great. It's all packaged up. You have the smart contracts, you have the UI harness, you have the unit tests, and you have uh, the JavaScript API layer. And all that combined uh, will be packaged up as a smart module for a JavaScript developers to be able to uh, integrate with and use within their Web3 applications. Um, cool, so now um, if we actually want to go ahead and look at uh, one of these example stories, we can do that as well. Um, so uh, let's say for Connect Wallet, uh, we see that you know it has uh, the button, so it's displaying one of these functionalities. And then uh, you know we're displaying that um, to Storybook, um, that, that component to Storybook. So uh, very similar, if we go to, you know, get balance of, you'll see that it's doing very similar stuff. Um, you know, we're just uh, passing in, obviously, uh, different um, components or whatever it is, um, uh, different title, naming convention, um, uh, arguments, if there are any, um, and then, you know, binding that uh, to um, the demo for, for Storybook. So we can go ahead and, and see that right there as well. Um, Cool. Uh, so I think 
uh, that is about it. Um, so those are the four layers of uh, how to go about uh, building a smart module on the Hyperverse. Um, so first step would definitely be to uh, look at um, uh, the example uh, builder kit, which is in a separate repo, and I'll leave all the links down below uh, for both of these uh, builder kit versions as well. Thank you.